this um, it's called a startup screen, and Microsoft now uh, has startup screens for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all the different applications. And when you open up Word or Excel, any of those applications, this is the screen that appears, this startup screen. And what I was saying was, um, it will show you your recent documents here, and beneath that, you'll have a bunch of documents. When you point to a document or hover over a document, you'll see a pin up here, and that's the one I was talking about before. If I click on this, it causes it to rise to the top, and it will stay there till I click to unpin the document. Okay, so it's a really nice way of having shortcuts to go to different documents. If you don't see what you're looking for here, notice at the bottom there's an open other documents and that'll bring you to your regular open screen. You also over here to the right have a bunch of different templates. If you don't want just a plain blank document, then you can pick a different template. If you have this startup screen and you decide that, hey, I don't want any existing documents, I just want to go to my normal Word uh, screen with a blank document, you can just click on blank document and it brings you straight into Word with a blank document on your screen. Now some people love that new feature, they think it's great, and other people find that irritating because they just want to get to this screen that they've always been able to get to in the past. If you're one of those people, you'll see in my handout the instructions to get rid of that screen is just click on File and go down to Options. And under File Options, do you see where it says Show the Start Screen when this application starts? If you uncheck that, that's going to um, prevent that screen from appearing. So, And you can change your mind at any time. You can put it back if you decide you like it. But I actually usually take it off, but I put it on for this training just to show you what it looks like. Now, taking it off of Word will not take it off of Excel or take it off of PowerPoint. So you'd have to go into each of them and go to File Options and remove it. Um, what I've done is I've removed it in Word and in Excel, but I like keeping it in PowerPoint because in PowerPoint, that's when I do use a lot of design templates. So up to you what you want to do with that. OK, um, some more things. Can this be? Yeah, you hit this arrow right there. Okay. Some more new things across uh, applications, which you may have noticed uh, before, is that if you want to zoom in on something, you no longer have to go to print preview or anything. In the bottom right-hand corner, you have the zoom slider. And that'll take you up to 500%, making it a lot easier to view, or down. So it, it really makes it very easy to see whatever you want to look at right on your screen. Okay. You also, up here in all applications, in the bottom right-hand corner of anything that has what's called a dialog box, you have this little dialog box launcher, which brings you to that old dialog box that you're used to. Okay. You also have this thing called a quick access toolbar. And a lot of people don't even know they have it. Because when you start out, Microsoft puts the quick access toolbar in the top left corner, and there's only two or three little tools on it. The ability to use this quick access toolbar is huge because you can put all your favorite tools on it and not have to go through all the different tabs to find the tools that you want. So being able to customize the quick access toolbar and make it what you want is a, a tremendous time saver. Also, I believe that moving the quick access toolbar from being above the ribbon to being the below the ribbon is really helpful for a couple reasons. One is, if you have it above the ribbon, your document name will be squished or totally hidden if you have a lot of tools. The other thing is, if you have a lot of tools, this area up here is already used. So you'd only be able to get tools going about this far rather than all the way across the screen. And it's also really nice to be able to have tools close to your document instead of far away. But that's, again, up to you. If you want to customize this quick access toolbar, um, unfortunately, I guess all of you are muted. But if, you, if you've ever had a class from me before, you know the one thing that I always tell you is the correct answer for any question is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So currently, if your quick access toolbar 
is up here, to move it down, you would just right click on it. So I'm going to right click anywhere, doesn't matter where, anywhere on my quick access toolbar. And do you see where it says show quick access toolbar above the ribbon? I'm going to go ahead and click that so you see where it normally is. And do you see how it squished it so that I can't see my document name and I can't see as many tools because it's keeping all this area here. So if that happens, then, and you want to move it, not to mention, do you see how it's sort of lost all its colors? It's become blue and white, so it's a little more difficult, I think, to see what those tools do. So I'm going to right click again, and notice now it says show quick access toolbar below the ribbon. And I think these pictures are a lot easier to follow than the ones up here. So then the question is, how do I get things onto the quick access toolbar? Well, what do you do a lot? Let's say you do um, envelopes a lot, and you keep forgetting that it's on mailings, or you would just like to have it be easy to access. Well, here's my envelopes tool. If I want to put it on my quick access toolbar, what do you think you'd do? If you don't know how to do it, you're going to right click. As Sue just told me, she's sitting next to me, right click on it, and do you notice it says Add to Quick Access Toolbar, it's the very top item. So I do that, and notice it puts it right here. So anytime I want to do an envelope, instead of having to remember where it is or even just switch to that tab, all I have to do is come here, click on it, and it'll go straight into Launching Envelopes and Labels. If I later decide, hey, I really don't use it that much, it's a waste of space on my Quick Access Toolbar, so I want to get rid of it, I just right click and remove from quick access toolbar. Now what happens, there are a ton of things under file that I would love to have on my quick access toolbar like file open, file save, save as. I would love to have sending a document as a PDF attachment or sending a document in an email. I would love to have those, but look what happens when I right click. Absolutely nothing. <coughs> So that's a bummer. I told you that you can right click, and that's true 90% of the time, but it is not true 100% of the time. So if you can't get to what you want by right clicking on the actual item itself, another thing that you can do, once again, let's see if right clicking on the quick access toolbar is going to help us. Well, I right clicked on it. I don't want to remove. Customize. That sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and click on Customize the Quick Access Toolbar. When you do that, notice that you see on the left-hand side, you see some commands that you can put on the Quick Access Toolbar. And on the right-hand side are all the tools that are currently on your Quick Access Toolbar. See this? Customize Quick Access Toolbar. So this is what's on it. This is what you can put on it. Now, this is only showing you popular commands, which is a very short list of commands. If you'd rather see all commands that are possible, if you just click on the drop down, click on all commands, it will show you every single command available in Word. Okay? So this is a really nice place to go. Now, let's say you want to put, um, hmm. Let's say accept this change is something that you'd like to put on your quick access toolbar. If I come over here, I can either click and click add, or I can double click on it. But look what happens. It brings it to the very bottom, which corresponds to the very right hand side of the quick access toolbar. If you don't want it there, you can click on it and move it up or move it down. But if I wanted it toward the top, that would be a lot of clicks, right? Not terrible, but a lot of clicks. So I'm going to take this off. Again, I can double click or I can click on remove. I'm going to double click to remove it. If you know where you'd like it to be, like let's say I'd like it to be after save, then if I click on save first, then double click on accept this change, do you see how it puts it right below save? So it saves you a lot of time because it'll always put it right below whatever you've clicked on, okay? And then do you see that I have these things called separators here? Separators will always be at the very top, 
those separators are just visual separators that put little light lines. So it keeps like things together. So I don't, you probably can't see it. I can barely see it here, but there's a little separator here before undo and a little separator here after redo. So that's only if you want to be able to have things grouped together. Okay? So this has things like if I want to email, notice I, I, well, you probably didn't notice, but I pressed the E on my screen so that I could get down to the E's quickly. Now, I can't type E-M because once I do, I get to the M's. Unfortunately, it's only a first letter search, and from there, you're going to want to use your um, mouse to scroll up or down. But notice here, I can do things like email as a PDF attachment or email. Those are things I definitely want to have. Notice they're already on my quick access toolbar. He's, here's email. Here's email as PDF. Okay? Really helpful. Let me show you how that works. Any questions on this so far? If so, type them in and um, I'll get a notification that, that I need to answer some questions. But let's say you do an outstanding job making the perfect quick access toolbar. And one of your coworkers says, wow, I would sure love to have your quick access toolbar. If so, notice that you can come here and you can just say export. Give it a name. Notice it names it Word Customizations Exported. Save it somewhere. Email it to them. And all they have to do is come here and do an import. The one thing you want to know, though, is that it won't add to their quick access toolbar. It will replace it. So if they have special tools on there, they're going to want to look and make sure that they take those, uh, take note of which ones they are so they can re-add them. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK right now. And what this allows me to do, this email and email as PDF, if I click on email, notice it's going to immediately attach it to a, okay, and I don't have to save it and then come in here and open it and do all of that sort of thing, okay? Or if I want to email it as a PDF, the neat thing is I don't have to save it as a PDF first. I can just have it convert on the fly and it's ready to go as a PDF. So instead of having to save a PDF, I don't know about you, but for me, the only reason I save something as a PDF is so I can email it to somebody and not have them change it. And so the second I've saved something as a PDF, it's obsolete. And so I used to have all these obsolete PDFs on my system that every single time before I sent it again, I would probably save the document again. Now it converts it on the fly, so you only have your document on your system, and the person receiving it gets the newest version PDF'd. So I really like that feature a lot. Okay? All right. So remember this is talking about across all applications. So if I were to go to Excel, you would see uh, sending as an email and sending as a PDF. I put those on there as well. And I really like keeping things consistent across my quick access toolbars if, if it makes sense. So for instance, notice I have open, then new, then save, then save as, then email, then email as PDF. If you look at my Word, I do the same thing. Open, start a new document, save, save as. Here I do have close, um, and then email, email as PDF, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, so looking at the ones that I have here, I do wanna point out this save as. The reason I like putting save as on here, not just save as, but save as with a drop down is it allows me to do a couple things that I like to do. One is, if I do want to ever save as a PDF, I can just do it straight from here. But the other is the very top one. It says save as document, but what it's really saying is, do you want to save this in the most current version? So if you ever have a document that up here says compatibility mode, it means that it's an older version. It means that maybe you have a 2013 or a 2010 document if you're in 2016. And if you're in compatibility mode, the negative to being, I mean, you can use it, you can do absolutely everything except any of the newer functions. 
So for instance, in a minute, I'm going to show you how you can insert, whoa, how you can insert a screen clip, a screenshot or screen clipping into a document. If this had been a document in compatibility mode, this insert screenshot would be dull gray because you can't use a feature that's in a future release when you're in a back release, okay? So if you ever see a document that says compatibility mode and you want to save it, if you go to save as document, what it's gonna do is it's going to upgrade it to the current release, okay? All right, so that's why I have that there. The reason I have close here is because in Word, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's, it's hard to always tell if you're in the last document. And there's nothing more frustrating to me than closing the last document and having it shut down Word. Because I always click on the X. I don't know what you guys do to close, but I always click on the X. So if it's the very last document open, Word shuts down and I have to restart it. So I started using this close because it will close out of that last document, but leave Word open. Okay. All right, so let's look at this new screenshot feature, inserting a screenshot. Um, I've got Excel open. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a document, uh, not a document, a spreadsheet. So a lot of times people love Excel, but when they copy and paste something into a document, they, they just don't feel the formatting is quite as pretty. And so they're in Word or they're in um, Outlook because they want to send just a piece of a spreadsheet and they wish they could just have it be perfect, like a screenshot. And also that way nobody can make any changes, right, if it's a screenshot. So I can take a screenshot of this if I want to, but then I'll have all the little lines, right, these little separator lines showing, which is fine if you don't mind that. But let's do a print preview. I've got print preview right here on my screen. And let's say this is what I'd really like to send to you, just this little area right here, okay? So what I can do is now I can go back to Word or I can go back to Outlook wherever I want to insert the shot. And all I do is I go to insert. I'm not gonna do screenshot, I'll show you that in a minute, but I'm gonna click on the down arrow next to screenshot and go to screen clipping. When I click on screen clipping, notice what it does is it immediately shuts down Word and it goes to the last thing you saw. So it was really important that I went straight from Excel back to my document. Had I first gone to check my email and then gone to Word, and then said insert screenshot, it would have brought me back to email. So it's always gonna show you the last thing you're looking at. So this was the last thing I was looking at. Notice it looks dull gray. You might think, oh my gosh, something bad happened. No, what it's doing is saying, <clears throat> I'm going to now allow you to use these crosshairs to drag across whatever you'd like to see inserted into your Word document. Now be careful, you're only given one chance here. So make sure you have your crosshairs wherever you like to start. Make sure you're far enough left, far enough up, whatever it is, okay? And then just hold your left mouse button down and notice that as you drag across it, it becomes clear. So you can do this much, however much, just don't let go until you're ready. So if I say, oh, that looks good, let go, boom, right in my document. Beautiful, nobody can change it, exactly perfect. And again, remember, we're talking about things that are good across all applications. So if I go to Outlook, click on a new email, I'm down here in my email. It will be dull gray if I'm up here in the two because I can't insert a screenshot in the two. So I'm gonna come down into my email. If I look at insert, it's always gonna be in the same place. Here's screenshot. Now, the last thing I looked at was Word, right? So I'm gonna wanna go to Excel if that's what I really want to bring in, okay? Then go back. To, I'm just using alt tab, but however you want to go back to your uh, email. Again, I'm going to go to uh, inserting a screenshot, okay, screen clipping. It went dull gray. Let's say I'd like to get two of these in this time, so I'm going to do two. Let go, boom, right into your email ready to go, okay? 
So that's inserting a screen clipping. Inserting a screenshot is even easier. If you go into insert, if you click on the down arrow next to screenshot, what it does is it shows you every single open window that you've got. Okay? So whichever one you would like, you just click and it brings in the entire screen. So as long as you don't mind having the entire screen, then that's even easier to do. The other one just allows you to focus on just the part of the screen that you want. So extremely helpful little tool. It's like the snippet kind of a tool. Okay. All right. So a, Let's a go quick back. question that is here, um, which is, um, it, are you going to talk about at all the transferring uh, data tables from Word to Excel or uh, vice versa? Uh, transferring data tables from Word to Excel? No, we're not getting that specific. This is this is going things that are across all applications. Okay, is, is that something that might be but, covered in in the Excel class coming up in a month? Um, it's not part of the class, but if we end early, I'd be very happy to do that, or I'd be happy to get with that person offline or something like that. Um, okay. I did want to make clear. Well, we can talk about it later, but I did want to make clear a lot of people, including myself, when I heard about Excel tables, I thought that seems like an awfully strange topic because everything in Excel is in a table, so that, that seems odd. But uh, there actually is a feature in Excel called tables, which is a really cool feature, and that's what we're going to be covering. So don't think it's just because Excel is in a table. It is a very neat feature and definitely worth learning uh, okay. in the next class. So um, if we do have time at the end, uh, I'll try and get more information from you, and we can see if we can cover that today. Otherwise, we can try and do it offline. Um, OK, so back to Word, I think, is where we were. I'm trying to think where I was now. Um, all right. So we covered the quick access toolbar, inserting screenshots. Notice how much I like inserting screenshots and inserting uh, screen clippings. So they happen to be on my quick access toolbar as well. OK? Um, in Word and in all the applications, I just want to show you, especially if you're new to 2013 or 16, you have your ribbon display options in the top right hand corner. And what that means, this is your ribbon here. And what it wants to know is, do you just want to see the tabs across the top or the ribbon, or do you want this whole thing hidden and only visible uh, when you bring your mouse point to the top of the screen? So I like to always see both my tabs and my ribbon. But if you say show tabs only, it's going to look like this. And so it'll give you an extra inch or so on your screen. And when you click on the item, you'll still see everything, but you just won't see everything when you're not clicked on it. That's one choice. And then auto hide hides the whole thing. And it's not until you bring your mouse up to the top and click that you get to see any of it. OK? And I show this to you because if you look at some of the, um, some of the options that Microsoft gives you, I don't know if OneNote is something you have started using, but it's the best application I can think of next to Excel. Um, in OneNote, the default is to not see the ribbon. And so if you want to be able to see the ribbon, you would come in here, uh, excuse me, to not see the entire ribbon and click on Show Tabs and Commands. OK? All right. Um, so I'm in, if you're looking at the handout at all, we've covered pretty much everything on uh, page one of the handout. Uh, except if you are in 2013 or 2016, well, 2016, I wanted to show you that up here in the top right-hand corner, you have a new tool called the Share Tool. And if you want to share this document, they're just making it easier now for you to share simply by coming up to the top right-hand corner, clicking on Share. And then notice the first thing it does is it says you have to save either to the cloud or to SharePoint, depending on what you're doing. Um, because in order to share, it has to be in a, in a storage location the other person can get to. Okay? And then it will ask you 
who you want to share it with, and it'll send them an invitation, and then they'll be able to accept. Also, let me see if I, oh, mm, well, maybe it'll work. Let me try um, actually doing it, getting a, because I have things on my OneDrive. Okay, so now if I want to click on share, by the way, notice that I another tool popped up, which is activity. That has to also do with sharing. So all of these are sharing tools up here, but I'm going to click on share. Notice when I did, because this is on OneDrive, so it is on a place where other people can get to, then I can come over here and type in somebody's email address or come and search my address book for different content, uh, contacts. So let's say I want to add Sue. Okay, double click on Sue, click on OK, and then it says, what are you going to let Sue do? Am I going to let her edit the document, or am I just going to let her view the document? Those are your two choices, okay? You can also include a message saying, hey, this is the document I was telling you about, or whatever it is, or could you please review? Okay, and then I just click on share. Notice I can also send as attachments or other or send a sharing link if I want to. I'm going to click on share. So she'll now get an email and she'll be able to click on it and open up the document. Notice it's telling me also that Sue can edit the document. Also, notice that if I want to email Sue just by pointing to her, I can click on email. Or if I were on the same network as she was, I could start a video conference about this. I could uh, do a conference call, a chat, any of those kinds of things through the new Skype for Business. Okay. So if I want to see the share uh, area, I can simply by clicking on this. I can also hide it. But clicking on it now shows me all the people that I've shared it with. And then, I, like I say, I can also hide it. Over here, it allows you, me to make comments. So if I wanted to click on this and click on a comment, I could click on a new comment and say anything I wanted to, like uh, this part needs review. Okay. I'm going to close this up now because it makes it a little harder for me to see the document. But now, if Sue were looking at this, this is actually Real-time co-authoring. Sue could be working on this at the exact same time I am, if you've got 2016. She could also come in, in here and click on reply. Okay, So she can actually reply to my comment, and I could reply to her. So either you can um, just work online and, and share information this way, or if at a time you say, oh, I really need to talk to her, Again, I can just point to her and use um, my tools to be able to have a video conference or, or a, a conference or any of those sorts of things. So this, this commenting is a new thing, to inline commenting, to be able to comment directly to what somebody else has said, and to also be able to both of you work on the document. And I would actually be able to see Sue typing into the same document that I was at the same time. Okay. But that's not true if you're in 2010. OK, so we've finished page one. Page two is the quick access toolbar, which we've done as well. If you were to look at page two, I have um, what I would recommend are several of the different things that I would put on your Word toolbar. Oh, looks like we need to change that back. OK, and uh, that's true of four and five. Another thing new across all the applications, or new in 2000. 2013, um, if you start to drag or select any words and let go, you get this what's called a mini toolbar. And that allows you to bold, italicize, do all this different formatting right here without having to come up to the top. And that's true in Excel, it's true in all the different applications. Okay? Something else new in 2016 is this, tell me what you want to do. Now, most of you might think, well, hey, that's just help. 
Well, it isn't just help anymore. If you click and tell me what you want to do, if I start typing something like footnotes, I don't know how to insert a footnote. I have no idea what um, tab it's on. I, have, I, don't, I just don't know how to do it at all. As soon as I do that, if I click on add a footnote, for instance, and I can say how I want, oh, excuse me, this says foot, footer. If I click on footnote, okay, um, or footnote and endnote, look what happens. It immediately put in the little footnote reference up where my cursor was, which is right there, and brought me into the footnote. So it's not just help. If you're selecting any of those top things, it actually brings you to the command. So you never have to learn where a command is anymore if you don't want to, which is pretty cool. Now let's say that's nice, but that isn't what you want to do. So I can type in the footnote now if I want to. If you click in here, it also shows you the last things that you looked up. So if I wanted to look up, let's say, Smart Lookup, I can do that right now as well. Down, if you start typing in something, though, let's say I'm going to type in footer. Do you see where it says Get Help on Footer? So I can either add a footer right now using the footer tool, okay? Or I can, if you use these bottom options, th these are getting help, and it'll bring you into how to create a header or footer, okay? so. Um, so you, you can use it for help, but you can also use it for actually performing whatever it is that you want to perform. All right, and that's what it's telling you on page seven. All right, Smart Lookup. If you are um, in a doc, if you're online, um, have web access, and let's say you want to know more about co-authoring or let's see, um, I don't know. Let's try co-authoring. If you highlight that and right click on it, you see that there's a new feature called Smart Lookup. So I click on Smart Lookup, it opens up this area on the right hand side and it uses Bing to search the internet for whatever it was that you have highlighted. So now I can come over here and look up these articles. Okay. So another kind of a neat feature, you can scroll down and see lots more, okay? So while you're staying in Word, you can be looking things up. You can also highlight and bring things into your document if you want to, copy and paste them into your document. Okay, that's page eight. Page nine talks about the screen capture tool, which we've done. 10 talks about the start screen, which we've already done as well. Um, open. Let's go to open. You can either do file open or I put it here on my quick access toolbar. Oh, um, and notice in this screen I have push buttons or push pins to uh, by my favorite folders. So you can also push pin folders. Okay. Did you have something here that you wanted? To? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let me open a document that have that I've already worked in. Do this. Oh, that's good. It's not coming up. Normally, it should come up with a. Uh, it comes up with a little resume reading. I don't know if you've seen that in the past. Let's see if I can do another one and see if it'll work. I'm not sure why it didn't do it. Hmm. Well, in general, over on the right, it'll say resume reading, and it will take you to the exact place that you left off in the document um, instead of having to go find it yourself. Um, you'll see it, if you look on page 12, you'll see it will say welcome back, and you'll just click on that little thing that pops up to bring you to that exact same spot. You've had it always in Excel, but now you have it in Word and PowerPoint as well. Okay, page 13, how much time do we have? 15 minutes? Quarter, Quarter. okay. Um, building blocks is another amazing feature that's new in, well, it's not really new feature in, uh, but it's something that's 
so beneficial and a lot of people don't know how to use it. Building blocks allows you to save different things and just click on them and put them into your document. Okay, look at this arrow. I use it a lot in my handouts. So instead of having to find it each time, all I have to do is click on it. So let's see how that works. So let's say you have this paragraph that you just use all the time. All I have to do is select it and go to insert. And on the insert menu, do you see where it's called building blocks or quick parts? Okay, if I click on quick parts, then I can go to auto text and save selection to auto text gallery. Okay, now you may say, oh, I know about auto text. That was back in 2003. Well, auto text is only one kind of quick part. Um, so let me show you what all the different kinds are. But basically what a quick part is, is the ability to save anything that you use a lot and have it right at your fingertips whenever you want it. So let's say there are letters you write a lot, or let's say there are tables, or pictures, or logos, or absolutely anything you can save and easily, without having to go to File, Open, Find Where It Is, you can easily insert it in your document. So let's go ahead and click on Save Selection. And now I'm going to give it a name. So uh, this is a hard one to give a name to. I think I'll do something different. I think I'll just create my own quick part real quick. I'll do Sincerely Sandy Rylander uh, Rylander Consulting. OK, so whatever you want to put here. So now I'd like to make a quick part so I never have to type that in. Now, if your um, closing is always at the left side of your screen, then you're good to go. But if you want your closing to be in the middle, then why not drag it over at this point so that you won't have to do that later? I don't know. Do you guys do yours block left or do you have it in the middle? Left. Left? OK. I'll go back to left. Um, so remember, save it as a quick part. I go to Insert. I go to Quick Part. And I go to Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. Now, if you're going to do this a lot, it makes a lot of sense to not have to go to all that work and to just put it right on your Quick Access Toolbar. Remember that? So I, that's what I did. So I'm going to Save Selection to Quick Access Toolbar, I mean to, uh, to the auto text. And I'm going to call this my closing. OK? So there's a number of different things on here. So first, you're going to give it a name. Second, it is going to ask you what gallery you want to put it in. Remember I told you there's a lot of things other than auto text? Well, let's just look. There is a header gallery, a footer gallery, a page number, text boxes, tables, all of these. Well, what does that mean? What do these different galleries mean? Let me show you. When I go to insert a table, and I go to insert table, a quick tables, this is the tables gallery. So it is sort of like an auto text, except that you find it when you're doing tables. <clears throat> Let's say you're doing a footnote, or excuse me, a footer. If I click on it, do you see how you have all these footers? So that would be the footer gallery. This would be the header gallery. So basically, what it's asking you is, when you want to go find it and bring it back, do you want it to be in the headers, in the footers, so it's easier to find than having just everything be um, a, an auto text. OK? Now, notice what <clears throat> this is called. Do you see this is called built-in? This is called a category. So this is built in. OK, let's look at this under Quick Tables. This is called built in. Sometimes they're called built in, and sometimes they're called general, this category. The reason I'm explaining this to you is look what's going to happen when I save this. So it asks me what gallery. 
And notice the category is general. So this is one of those that general would be the name of the category, that gray area. What that does is it groups things together. Now those things, B and G, are close to the top of the alphabet, right? So if you just leave it in general or you just leave it in built-in, your items are going to come below every single one of Microsoft's built-in items. So if you'd like to see your stuff on top because you use your stuff more, then make yourself a category. You only have to make it once, so for each of the different galleries. But I'm going to create a new get a category. And I'm just going to start it with an underscore. By starting it with an underscore, I know it's going to come at the top, right? Because symbols always sort before letters. Or you can start with a number one, or you can start it with the letter A, whatever comes before built-in or general, OK? If I want, I can just put in my initials. So these are all my things. Or I can name it, maybe this is going to be, um, maybe I'm going to have many different closings. Some are going to have a disclaimer. Some are going to have whatever. I can name it closing. Or I can name it letter part. However I want them grouped together, that's all it's going to do is group it like that. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to name this. And then I can give it a description if I'd like. Um, I can just, this is saving it in what's called your normal template. Okay, and I can choose to insert content or insert content in its own paragraph, meaning it'll put a, an enter after it, or in its own page, which means it's going to make it's going to put a hard page break after it. Generally, you're going to have just insert content only, so I'm going to click on OK. So anytime I'm in a document now and I'd like to use that footer, all I have to do is either go to insert quick parts or if I have this conveniently located here, I just click, click, boom, done. How cool is that? So notice this is called letter parts. So I can have another one called pleading parts or, you know, whatever it is you'd like, however you'd like to group it, give it some thought because it'll group it. And it's above general because I used the underscore to be above the G. Okay, so I get to see my stuff first. Now, what happens if I want to change something? Like I decide this really should have been over in the middle. The way you replace a quick part is you need to remember exactly what you named it and where you stored it and all of that. So what I mean by that is, so if I go back to Save Selection to the Auto Text Gallery, I need to remember that I named it Closing. Is that what I named it? I think so. Um, I didn't save it in the general category. I saved it in the letter parts. Notice how that shows up. If I do everything correct and click on OK, then it should ask me if I um, want to replace. But let's say it's been years since I've done this. I don't really remember what I named it. It's been seconds I don't really remember what I named it. If I click on this down arrow, if I right click on the quick part that I don't remember, so I'm right clicking by the, um, on this, I can click on edit properties. Properties shows me exactly what I named it, I don't think I named it sincerely, though. That's weird. Let me just check and make sure. It should show me. Uh, let's try that again just to make sure. Hmm. Did I really? That's weird. Okay. I thought I named it closing. Um, but I guess I... Yeah, actually, I can see I did because it says sincerely right here. That's the name of my quick part. Okay. So it knows better than I, so it's good I didn't name it closing. But anyway, what I was trying to show you was, excuse me, right click, go to Edit Properties. So I named it sincerely. I can even do a copy right now if I want to. I can see it was auto text, it was letter part, all the things that I need to know. Make sure you know those, okay? And then when you go to Save, Selection, to auto, uh, I can just, um, Make sure it's still sincerely. And auto text is correct. The only thing that's not correct is it was under letter part. This is all correct. Click on OK. And when you see this, you want to redefine, you know you're good to go. 
So click on yes. Now often I don't see this and I get this sinking feeling that, uh-oh, I didn't name it exactly right. I didn't put it in the exact right location. Now I've got two quick parts. What do I do? I'm going to go ahead and click on yes, but I'll show you what happens if you accidentally do it wrong. Before I show you what happens when you accidentally do it wrong, I want to show you that now your quick part should play back in the middle, just that you have wanted it to, okay? But one of the things that you can do when you're in a quick part, you can just right click on it. Right under edit properties, do you see where it says organize and delete? Let's click on that. Organize and delete shows you all the different, and you can make these as wide or narrow as you'd like, shows you all the different uh, quick parts you've created, all the quick parts that are automatically given to you by Microsoft, okay? And the way you know whether you created it or not is anything that's called built-in, you did not create, okay? So this one was created by me, this one was created by me, um, and as you scroll over, uh, you can see the different um, properties that you have in here, okay? If there's one you don't want, you just click on it, press delete, and it's gone. So you just go to the old one, press delete, and it'll go away. I don't need to have this one in here, so I'm going to press delete. And it says, are you sure you want to? Yes, I do. And it's gone. Okay, any questions about that? Now, the other thing you can do is rename one. Let's say I don't like the name of this anymore. In here, I can click on it, click on Edit Properties, and I can give it a new name if I want. I can change absolutely anything I want at this point and click on OK. Okay? Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm Okay. Any question about building blocks? Okay. So notice that I've not only put building blocks for, this is my autocorrect that I can easily get to, but I also put one for tables. So I can put any tables I can create, I can quickly put in there. So those are super handy to have in your quick access toolbar, okay? All right, so that's through page 14. Uh, actually, it goes through page uh, 22, it looks like. All right, print and print pre preview on page uh, 23. All of the different applications now if you go to print, if you just hit the print, file print, you'll notice that print and print preview are all in the same screen. It's no longer two different screens. And sometimes that's nice. For instance, if I decide now instead of portrait, I'd like to go to a landscape orientation, it shows you right here immediately all the different things that you're changing. If you're going to go to a smaller margin, It'll show you that immediately on screen. So that's nice. But what I miss is the ability to make changes uh, to my document like you were able to do in the old print preview. So one of the th reasons, if you've ever looked at a quick access toolbar I've created, these two look identical. But this one is really the new print preview and print, the one you just saw. And this one is the old print preview edit mode. So if I click on this one, then it goes to this print preview edit mode, which I can't edit right now because I'm in zoom mode. But if I take zoom off, excuse me, not zoom off, magnify off, where's magnify, here we go. If I take magnify off, then I can do whatever I want to, whatever I want to do. And I really love this old print preview. So again, even though it's not accessible anywhere else, if you right click on your quick access toolbar and customize the ribbon, you can, if you go to all commands and you go to print preview area, you'll see there are two different kinds of print preview. One is uh, the normal print pre the new print and print preview, okay, and then the print preview and edit. So you can put both of those on. Again, you can do that in Excel as well, where it's also nice to have that old print preview. Okay. So
So that goes through page 26. We already talked about emailing a, a document as a so PDF. Quick oh, question. Go ahead. Um, yeah. How many of these features are also in Word for Mac? That's a great question. If I were a Word for Mac person, I'd be able to answer it, but I really have not a clue. I'm really sorry about that. I do know that generally um, the release levels are one level back in Word for Mac, so I just am not, I just don't know the answer. So what I would do is whatever uh, version that you have for your Mac, I would Google what is new, and it'll tell you which of these features um, you would have. Now, if on your Mac you have Parallels, so you're really using Office, um, you know, the, the PC version versus the Mac version, then yes, you will have all of these features. But on the true Mac version, I, I can't tell you. I'm sorry. Uh, so. Okay. When you attach a document now, um, I don't have this issue because I'm a standalone. But you, if you're part of like NJP or any of, you know, a company where what you're attaching is a um, is on a network or that sort of thing, it's going to try and attach something as a link, which has been a requested feature forever. And so you may like that or you may not like that. You may not like that, especially if you're sending it out of your office and the person can't click on the link to edit it. That would be not a good thing. Um, but in general, you have the ability here to click on the down arrow. Again, I don't have that option because I'm, I'm a standalone, but here you should be able to change it from being a link to being an attachment or, um, or back to being a link if you want to. You right click on the attachment. But I don't think, I, I don't oh. think, see, the, the problem is I don't, I'm not on a, yeah. You don't have to right click on, I mean, you can right click on it, but you do have a drop down arrow right here. Notice these are other options that are new in 2016 is the, uh, and maybe 2013, I don't remember, but the ability to click on, I think so in 2013 as well, the ability to click on open, quick print, all of these remove attachments simply by clicking on this down arrow, which is quite nice. <clears throat> also. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, new in 2013. Even though this is not true across all applications, just wanted to let you know this attach item is really nice. What it does, excuse me, attach file. What it does now is it shows you the last uh, 20 odd documents that you, uh, you've worked in across all applications, and it allows you to insert them. So instead of again, if you are here trying to insert a document. All you would have to do is click on that, and if it's one of the most recent ones, just click on this, and boom, it, it gets put in as an attachment. That's a very cool new feature. Now I'm getting short through it. Okay. Um, on page 27, it shows you sharing a document. Um, we did go over that already, how to share. Uh, but in here you'll see the flags that appear when you are sharing a document and other people are editing at the same time. That's something that I couldn't show you on my screen, so just pointing out that out on page 27. I'm going to put this on this side so you can see. Okay. Um, okay. Graphics. How are we doing? We're doing okay. Um, one of the newer features as well, and instead of just inserting pictures, which is pictures from your um, from your network or from your hard drive, there's insert online pictures, which used to be like clip art. Um, so we're going to insert a picture real fast, hopefully, real fast if it loads pictures reasonably quickly. Okay. Um, and I can do something like searching for heart. So I just type it in, hit enter, and let's insert a couple different ones. Double click on that one. Oh, and insert, I guess I have to. Summer. Because what? Okay. One of the nice things, uh, let me type some text in here. When you insert or even click on a picture, well, first of all, let me make this a little smaller. Okay. Uh, when you click on a picture, one thing people used to really hate about working with pictures is the whole wrapping text around thing. 
um, especially when you're bringing something in. It brings it in as what's called inline is the default generally. And so notice when it's inline how it's just making this big uh, gap between this uh, line and this line because it's in line with the text. And so now just simply by clicking on a picture, you have all the wrapping features right at your fingertips. You just click on this tool and click on whichever wrapping you would like and all of a sudden now it wraps around or however you choose to wrap it. So that's a nice, really nice feature. Um, and you can just move it and it shows you uh, exactly how it's going to look. I'm going to make a second one of these. Um, Another neat feature that I'm not seeing uh, is it generally shows you where it is going to line up. And I'm not quite sure why it's not showing me. <coughs> Have you seen that? Oh, yeah, it shows you a little green line. Yeah, Very it shows cool. you little lines. I'm not quite sure why it's not showing me those lines right now. Let me try and uh, see if PowerPoint will be a little more helpful. It's always nice when you're teaching and they don't work. Oops, that's PowerPoint 2010. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, and we'll just let's see if I bring in my picture. No, I have to bring it in this way. Okay, so see here how you see these little lines that are showing it. Can you see the lines? I don't know if you can see the lines on your um, on your screens or not. But there's a line that's showing you that right now I'm right in the middle of the screen. Um, it'll also, if I have multiples of these, let me drag another one, it'll show you when, when you're lined up with the right or the left. Let me drag a little slower. See how it's showing you that you're lined up exactly now? And if I bring it up here, how I'm lined up uh, the left side and the right side. So those positioning lines are really helpful. In Word, it should be showing us, like when you're lined up with the top of the paragraph, left, right, center, all of those different things. Um, so that's something new and showing you on page 31. Okay. In SmartArt, they keep on improving SmartArt in every release. And I don't know if you've used SmartArt before, but if you go to Insert and SmartArt, it's in, like I say, in every single application. Where I find SmartArt to be incredibly useful actually is in PowerPoint. Um, in PowerPoint, everybody seems to love bullets because, well, because PowerPoint sort of set up like that. Um, and so I'm going to go to a bullet type of a look. Um, I'll just type in Word, PowerPoint, whoa, PowerPoint, Excel, my favorite, OneNote. Okay, and bullets, lists get really boring really quickly. So instead what I can do is I can highlight that list and you see up here where it says convert to smart art. I can click on this down arrow and you have this plethora of different um, options that not only make it more enjoyable to look at but also make it so that you're conveying additional information. For instance, I'll click on, well, I won't even click on this one. All I'm doing is hovering over it. And now I'm going to click because I want to get rid of this word sincerely. Okay. And see how if you had something that you wanted to show was a drill down kind of a thing, it would be that easy. Okay. Or if you want to choose a different smart art, if I click in here, I can choose any different shape that I want to have in there. Um, by going to the different designs. Um, and I can come down see here and choose a different look really easily. Okay, different design, all of those kinds of things. Um, let me go back to where it was before. Oh, got my sincerely back again. Okay, let's highlight again. 
in the smart art notice that there are some that have like little circles up here or down here that's where you can actually insert pictures if you want to or down here you can add, you can add text to the right of word and to the right of powerpoint so just i think they're just amazingly nice uh tools now that allow you to here i can click on that to add a picture if I want to, from a file if I want to do it from a file, or from the internet if I want to do that. Um, let's see, pick one from a Hawaii vacation. There we go. That's how simple it is. Okay. So that's smart art and graphics. They now in uh, 2016 have great new version history and history. If you click on file you'll see um, different versions and different ways of managing your document and history. Um, you'll see over here on the left, again, since I'm a standalone, it's not showing me history, but you will see it. I printed out a screenshot so that you would see it on page 37. Do you do research much? Is that something that... Okay, because there's a new feature called Researcher. If you're interested in that, you should look at it because it not only goes to look for things, but allows you to add citations, allows you to drag topics in really quickly. Um, and that's on pages 3940. That's new in 2016. Okay. So that's, that goes on for a little bit. Oh, page 47, editing PDFs. This is something that you really ought to know about. In Word, and this started in 2013, you can actually open a PDF and edit it. So if somebody creates a PDF and you want to work with it, you can just go to Open. And let's see if I have, I was hoping I had a small one. Um, well, that's not a PDF. Well, let's make it into a PDF. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to my co-authoring document. Where is that? Here we go. Forgot I put it right here. File save as PDF. <clears throat> and Oh, my documents, Office 2013 practice documents. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go open my PDF. Um, here's my PDF. Double click. Still working on it, I think. Because this is my doc. Oh, here it is. Notice it's flashing down here. Yeah. So over here, you can tell this is not my doc because do you see how it says PDF over here? But now I can actually come in and edit my document. Okay. It doesn't always convert perfectly, but it allows you to open and convert. And the, so the reason I'm teaching you this is because if you're trying to send a document that somebody cannot open, you're going to have to not just make it a PDF, you're going to have to lock it. So if you have Adobe or whatever and can lock a document, that would be the only way to keep somebody from being able to open it like this. Okay, so that started in 2013, the ability to open PDFs. All right. One of the last things that I wanted to go over with you that is one, one of the only things that I'm going to be teaching you that doesn't really span all applications, but I think is so important is the navigation pane in Word. Um, I'm going to bring up a large document. 
And do you see over on the left-hand side, this is called the navigation pane. And there's two ways it shows up. One is if you try and do a find, because it's how you can find things. Um, so let me go ahead and I'm going to close the navigation pane and just do a regular find. Notice when I do find, it comes up navigation. And if I want to find something like the word Outlook, First thing it does is it shows me every time it <coughs> finds Outlook and it highlights it in yellow, which is pretty cool. But it also, in the results pane, it gives me snippets of every place that Outlook is. I'll, and the reason it gives you a snippet is so you have a better idea of, hey, this is the snippet I wanted to go to. I can click on it, brings it right up. Okay. So it's neat for finding things. You can also go up or down by just clicking on this down arrow or up arrow to find uh, up to 58 snippets of Outlook. But that isn't really the reason I wanted to show it to you. I wanted to show it to you not for the find feature, but because of this headings feature. When I, if, I, if you're using styles, under here styles, heading one, heading two, heading three styles, which are an amazing feature. If you don't know how to use them and you work with long documents, you should learn how to use them. Because if you use a style, which is just a group of formatting characteristics given a name, then you will automatically be able to create things like a table of contents with all those headings. Okay, But not only that, um, this allows you to uh, collapse and expand these headings so you can actually use this as an outlook, an outline kind of a thing, right? To be able to see if it makes sense how you've organized everything, okay? And to see what you've covered. So you can collapse and expand the different um, headings. You can also click on a heading to go straight to it. So it makes it like a great little table of contents. But not only that, but starting in 2013, you're able to actually move using um, using these here. So for instance, if I wanted to move sneak a peek above the quick access toolbar, first of all, if I want, I can collapse it. I can drag it above the quick access toolbar and notice it moved that whole portion of my document. How cool is that? You don't have to select and go down numbers of pages. You can just work from here, move things up, move things down. You can even Notice that this is a heading level two. If I wanted to make it yet a, a further level in, I, I wanted to make it a heading level three, I could just right click and say demote, which will make it a heading level three, or promote, making it a heading level two. So I can work with this as an outline and do tons of great things in my document just by using this navigation pane. Now, the way I showed you the navigation pane was just to do a find, which works great. But also, if you click on view, there's going to be navigation pane. You'll be able to see that there as well. OK? So that's on page 47 in the handout. Goes quite a bit into that. And then it goes into find and replace, which again, that's nothing really new. That's just something that's incredibly handy. So I wanted to be able to put that in there for you. OK, uh, the last thing that I have on the last page of my handout, um, which is kind of fun, is in tables. If you create a table, you now notice if you come to the left of the table, if you want to insert a row, you now get this little cool little plus sign that allows you to insert rows right where you're uh, cursor is in the table. So that's kind of a fun new feature. Okay. So we've come to the end of the handout and also the end of our time. Uh, I just want to make sure that if you have any questions that you're given a chance uh, to ask some questions. And again, this was to cover just great useful features that span all the applications. I have a question. <laughs> Sue has a question. So since she's here, she gets to ask. So if you have a document, an old document, and you get the compatibility mode yes. message up top, mm -hmm. and you do save as, does it automatically update it to 2016, or are you duplicating it? Will it have the old one and the new one? That's a great question. So Sue is saying um, 
will it update the existing document or will it create a new one? It will create a new one. So I would go back and delete the old one because um, it not only will create a new document, but most likely, let's say it was a 2003 document or something, at that point it would have been named doc and the new one will be named docx. And so you're going to want to go back and probably delete the doc just so that you don't have two of the same, only one's old and one's new hanging out there. So that's actually a really great question. Um, and the way I showed you to, to do that was to click on this down arrow and go to document. But you'll also see if you do see compatibility mode up there, if you click on file, one of your top options is going to be do you want to update to the recent version? And you can click on that there as well. So a quick question, question? Yeah. Um, or two of them here. Uh, first, can you make changes to someone else's PDF with this new feature? Absolutely. Um, that's, that's why I was warning you that, um, I mean, when you say somebody else's, they would have had to have sent it to you or something. Um, but and, and you're not making the change to the PDF. You're making the change to it's opened it at, in Word as a Word document. So even though it still has the PDF extension, at that point, it's no longer PDF. It's an editable Word document. So that's what you're making the change to, not to the original PDF, but to the Word editable document that, that you have brought up. But somebody can make a change, and then they can PDF it, and that's, that's why I'm warning you, that if you really want something where, let's say, opposing counsel or whatever, you don't want them making modifications and sending it on, you're going to want to have a locked PDF from now on. Uh, the next question was, um, you seem to love OneNote. Um, will you be giving a training on that application? Um, and I'm putting in the uh, text uh, chat here a link to the most recent of our two OneNote trainings that Sandy has done for us. Um, it is a topic we will consider for next year also. Yeah, OneNote is, is the place to organize everything in your life. And uh, so that's why it, this is a, just a really quick look into OneNote. Um, but I have to-dos in here. I've got Office 6, 2016 in here, Skype, um, recipes uh, for everything under the sun, um, travel. So anytime I need to find anything, I no longer have to worry where anything is. It's always in one note. Um, so that's what I like. Is I feel like I'm a really organized person, but I never knew where I organized something to. So now instead of having to look for anything, like if I I've got four kids, and I, if I forget their bike combinations, I just type in bike. I don't have to look what folder did I put that in, the home folder, the this folder. It's just there. Um, I have a really hard time installing one of my uh, printers. It's a Xerox printer, so I can just type in Xerox, and the install instructions are there. I don't have to look at what post-it note did I put where, and where, why can't I find it, or if I'm in... Um, the grocery store, and I know I want to make something with quinoa tonight because all my recipes are on there. I can just go and see what all the ingredients are because I have OneNote on my phone. That's the other neat thing about OneNote. It can be across all platforms, your computer, your phone, your iPad, your Kindle. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be on everything, and it's free on all of those applications. And, by the way, it's free for everyone now, whether you own Office or not. You can get OneNote, you can download OneNote as a free application on your own on any platform. Just so now. Two, more, two more questions here. Um, and I also just dropped a link to all of Sandy's past trainings. We've got about nine hours of trainings from Sandy, including um, Outlook, OneNote, Excel Intro, Intermediate Excel, um, and then the so that link is in the chat. The next one was, can you move the quick access toolbar um, that we have set up in Word to have the same options in all Word apps? Um, do we import or export like you showed us previously? You just asked if they could be in all Word apps or in all apps. I, I've set up been... in Word to have the same options in all Office apps. Oh. So there are not the same options in all Office apps, so the answer would be no. 
Um, so in other words, um, in Excel, you have completely different commands than you have in Word and in PowerPoint and in Outlook. They're all different. And so they are not at all transferable. Now, yes, there are some, like I showed you, save, save as, those things, they are the same across the applications. But there are too many others that are not. So no, you cannot do that. But it, you, you saw it really takes seconds to create them. The, the difficulty, in, in my opinion, uh, or the challenge, not the difficulty, but is to how do you get the best tools, you know, the ones that, and ones that may not even be obvious that are there, like print preview from a past release, which is why I put the one for Word in your, um, in your Word, hand, in this handout, is to help you with some of those. Um, as we taught some of the other classes, I have tried to tell you what the different tool applications are, and I've actually created the toolbars for NJP, so they should have really cool tools on theirs. Um, so the next question was, uh, what forums or other resources would you recommend for learning about Word or for asking Word questions? Well, of course, I always recommend myself first, but um, <laughs> one thing that I, I uh, to, I'll be honest, I haven't actually experienced it myself, but my son, who I very much respect his opinion, um, seems to really like lynda.com. Now, lynda.com normally is a paid service, um, but I just found out, uh, at least for the King County Library System, if you log on to the King County Library System, you can actually get her uh, stuff for free, which is amazing to me, but that's what I've been told, that, and I, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Um, so I would advise looking in your own library system to see if you can do that for free. And then as Sue pointed out right next to me, which is, uh, you know, doing a search, Googling absolutely anything you want will, in general, have 100 videos on, yeah. on whatever it is you want. So you really don't need to, you know, do much other than that. The, the difficulty is finding ones that you like or you can understand because sometimes you know it's in a little bit more difficult to understand format um, and also to know the exact thing that you're looking for so if you're you know uh, so I would also highly recommend looking at the manuals that you guys already own from me because if nothing else that'll give you a list of topics that you then might want to Google uh, if assuming that they uh, that the handout itself doesn't answer the question. What I try and do in the handouts is I try and make them sort of like a cookbook. It's a step one, do this, step two, do that, step three, do that. So it makes it really easy, even in conjunction with watching a video. You can watch the video first, because I know a lot of people rather watch than read. But then if you go back and you go, gosh, I forgot how to do this step by step, you can look it up and say, oh, to create a footer, you do this and this and this. Um, so I'd say Google and use my handouts. Great, and all of those handouts are available on the LSN Tab Tech Library. They are um, posted with the videos in in the blog section, and I believe links to them we've also been including over on the YouTube channel with uh, uh, the full videos. Uh, so the next question we've got here is: Is it possible to find replace a caps lock list list of words at the same time? I don't know. If, so keyword oh, list. Oh, if you've got your cap, if you you changing the case, are you, if you type something in caps and you want to change it to another case, is that, what is that what you're asking? Yeah. What, what 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 Sue and I are trying to figure out is what the question is. Are you asking? Can you uh, change the case of something? No. Uh, let Let me try reading it again. Um, is it possible to find and replace list of words at the same time? List they've got. Oh, as a so word. like you want to change um, tab to tabular and home to hotel at the same time? Yeah, more than one word say. Or well, this seems to be saying a series of words, but I the question there's a follow up. Either way, here. I'll say no. More than one. Okay. There are Is a it, lot of very cool things, unless they're unless they're sequential. Like if I you know if it's like tabs like home and you have that several times, it is looking for, you know, an exact match kind of thing. So you, you do one and then you do the other. 
But right. the reason so I a, wanted a to... a phrase you could do, but it must be in that exact order, not separate. Right, yeah. The reason I love teaching replace, which I think we've done a, a thing on as well, I'm not quite sure, but a lot of people think replace is just replacing words, and they, they need to look at the more, and they need to look at special and format, because you can replace all bolding with underlining or, you know, that kind of thing. You can also... You know, if you've ever copied text from a, an email and pasted it in Word because you wanted it and you see all those hard returns after it and it just drives you crazy and you're sitting there deleting for 15 minutes all those extra hard returns, when if you knew replace, you could say, look for a paragraph mark, which is what a return is, and replace with nothing or something to that effect. So there's so many cool things that you can actually search for and replace with. Um, that it's worth learning about. Okay, and we're, we're coming up here at an hour and a half. The last question yep. here is, are, there, um, are these new features available in Publisher also? Almost everything that I talked about, if it pertains to Publisher, um, oh, that's PowerPoint. If it pertains to Publisher, it is also in Publisher. That is a true statement. That, that was yep. sort of the gist of this. I mean, there are certain things like the navigation pane, you know, stuff like that that just don't pertain, but, but almost everything should. 